What up everyone, I'm Rich Mays Lopez and this is the Release Roundup brought to you by the good people at SoulClick.com. In this week's show, we'll be taking a look at some of the top news stories and the top five sneaker releases of the week. Plus, I sat down with Adidas Vice President and Creative Director Mark Dolce and Global Creative Director Jose Cabasau to talk about the Brooklyn Creator Farm and the future of the Three Stripes. And now for the top news stories. Supreme finally officially unveiled its much talked about collaboration with Nike and the NBA this week via the Henny slash soup god J.R. Smith himself. The collection is inspired by OG Jeff Hamilton designed NBA gear and it features warm up jackets, authentic jerseys, authentic shorts, and two Air Force One mids. As with everything that Supreme does, the reactions are mixed with most people stuck on the fact that several brands including Jeff Hamilton, Reebok, and most recently Don C have done basically the same exact thing. In related news, I had to get a new credit card ASAP because Supreme declined two of mine last week. And I gotta be honest with you when I say that they are really testing my real G's go manual motto. Shout out to Manual Gang though. Stay strong this week, yo. Everyone's favorite Americana inspired Japanese brand, VizVim, is simply bugging. Adding to the recent trend of high end brands going way too far out of the box, the brand dropped its social sculpture collection which features a giant sized version of the denim trucker jacket and a matching giant pair of selvage slim fit denim jeans. The items are produced in one ridiculous size, which would fit baggy on Shaq and are even way too big for Michael Jordan to rock. The good news is that if you want to cop both of these pieces, it'll only set you back 12 stacks. Fresh off of dropping their white base Air Jordan 1 collab, new off-white and Nike leaks hit the net. The first is a collab football, aka soccer boot, that is rumored to be part of a much bigger off-white X Nike World Cup collection that will feature new gear and footwear. The second is a new version of the Nike X off-white blazer that is rumored to drop this winter. No word on exact release dates, but you won't be able to cop any of it anyway. Kim Kardashian absolutely bodied popular Yeezy leaker account slash clothing label, the Yeezy Mafia, on Twitter. This all stems from a Yeezy Mafia tweet, which stated that very confused retail buyers were invited to an empty showroom where they were told that Yeezy season seven was in fact canceled because Kanye couldn't achieve what he wanted to do with the collection. Their tweet went viral and became an instant meme on fashion and sneaker Twitter. Hours later, Kim K herself took to Twitter to absolutely destroy the Yeezy Mafia with a series of ether level quote tweets that shot down the Yeezy Mafia's original tweet called the group's legitimacy into question by saying that the account posts fake info and fake sneakers and basically said, you not gang. A moment of silence, please, for the Yeezy Mafia. In the ongoing saga of Drake potentially leaving Jordan for Adidas, he was spotted rocking Yeezys. These weren't actually Adidas Yeezys, they were season four suede combat boots, but since the sneaker world is all of a sudden on a Drake watch, we're taking this as a hint. Are we looking into this too much? Does this really mean anything? Do we have anything better to do with our time? Okay, the answer to the last one is definitely no, we don't have anything better to do. I recently sat down with Adidas Vice President and Creative Director Mark Dolce for his first one-on-one -on -one interview since his much publicized departure from Nike to Adidas. We touched on why he made the decision and he, along with Adidas Global Creative Director, Jose Cavasau, broke down what goes down inside the Brooklyn Creator Farm. Four years ago, you decided to join Adidas. Why? For me, it was about uh, not creating more products, but it was about creating and developing talent. You know, I saw what I was able to contribute, and I think, you know, coming to Adidas, it allowed me to, to develop the culture and to grow and cultivate talent. You're focused more now on your position, as you mentioned, on the people and on the culture. The Brooklyn Creator Farm, which you help bring to Adidas, is focused on the product or the people or both? I think the Brooklyn Creator Farm is for both. You know, first people, then product, and then process, you know? So I think what we look at it is holistic. So I see the Brooklyn Creator Farm as an open source creation center and really very symbolic of what we're here to do today. The Brooklyn Farm works in setting creative direction for the brand across uh, all categories. We have a fixed staff of 17 people and then we have a rotation program every quarter that brings in 10 designers across the brand, across uh, different categories and have an opportunity to experiment new ways to go about product creation. Never in my life have I had all the tools and the resources that I have today. So in the past, when I first got into the industry, it was mostly sketching and then Illustrator. But for now, the way we work, it's mostly hands-on. So it's like getting in the Maker Lab, 3D components, you know, we have 4D parts, you know, and then you start to like look and start breaking the brand's best innovations apart and then putting them back together. 
The Brooklyn Creative Farms Maker Lab is, is where creators and designers come together. It's where we unite everybody and it's about collaboration. It's about team environment where people get to work together and exchange ideas. For me, that's probably one of the best ideas that we have at the farm. So we're currently focused on uh, setting creative direction with the rest of the creative direction team for 2020 and beyond. So an example, we're working on the 2020 Olympics and we do that collaboratively. When you joined Adidas was part of a much larger movement that also included Pharrell Williams, Kanye West. Have you had a chance yourself to work with Pharrell or Kanye West? Uh, one thing I would say about our partnerships is that you know we don't really talk much about how we do it, but um, I think the people you just mentioned, Kanye and Pharrell, had a major impact in terms of the shift in terms of the consumer mindset. And I think what they what they were able to do was something truly remarkable. Now I still think there's so much more room and opportunity for us to grow in the future, especially here in the U.S. This is a monster statement for the brand uh, in terms of what we are. Absolutely hyper-focus on delivering amazing products uh, for the athletes to perform as much as is delivering the ones that we understand the culture around the sports uh, wanting to have. And now for the top five sneaker releases of the week. Coming in at number five, the Hollywood Nike LeBron 15, which drops on March 11th at a retail price of 185. At number four, the Bread Air Jordan 9, dropping on March 10th at a retail price of 190. At number three, the Nike Air Force One Mid X Supreme Pack, which drops on March 8th at a retail price of 165. Coming in at number two, the Soul Air Jordan 3, dropping on March 10th. And at number one, the Adidas Yeezy 700 Wave Runner, dropping on March 10th at a retail price of 300. If you missed out on the Wave Runner pre-sale on Yeezy Supply a while back, you will have another chance at copying Kanye's dad shoot this Saturday. No official word on the numbers yet, but don't get fooled into thinking that this will be an easy W. That's it for this episode of Release Roundup. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're copying anything this weekend, best of luck to you. See you all next week.